He said he wanted people to know there'd be 12 bodies before he's finished. And he said, quote, I came to take 12. I said, uh, what happens after 12? He said, quote, I go somewhere else, unquote. Uh, I asked him about the bite marks. He said that they wanted him to bite, that they asked for that. He complained that the article made him sound like a pervert. Um, I asked him if he was angry at the men. He hung up. He called you on your cell phone? Why didn't he call the paper? Well, I was all over the city yesterday handing my cards out to homeless men. He probably got the number from a card. Shit, I might have handed him a card. I think this is the guy. I mean, Detective, a chill ran down my back. Yeah, but there's no way to know. I mean, if it's some other nut, we're gonna look like fools if we run any of this in print. Your cell phone caught the number. He dialed you. Yeah, I dialed it back. Uh, payphone on South Hanover near West Street. All right. What did he sound like? What do you mean? Well, you talk to people for a living. Did he sound black, white, younger, older, high-pitched voice or low? Uh, he sounded to me like a white guy. Not a deep voice, but calm, almost monotone. He sounded older, I would say 40s. Not a really young guy. Can I have your notebook? Whoa, whoa, you can't have his notes. This, this isn't a confidential source. We'll invoke the Maryland Shield Law, but uh, they'll type up a copy and give them to you. But the actual document is property of the Baltimore Sun. So type it up. Like, now. So you're saying this could be the killer? Can we talk off the record? The homicide unit received a phone call this morning from a payphone from the same neighborhood. And based on Scott's voice description and the use of the number 12, <clears throat> well, let's just say we need to find whoever it was made both those calls. He made another call? Detective, as a newsman, I'm inclined to include these details in our coverage if there's a credible chance the killer was really in contact with our reporter. Would doing so have any negative effect on your investigation? Actually, these calls are our best means of finding this guy. Every call he makes, every word he says to you and to us, can only provide information. If we do run a story... Oh, but you can't say he's contacted the police. You can't print that part of it under any circumstances. Okay, then how do we characterize what the police think about this call to Scott? You can say that we're uh, taking it seriously. Going forward, is it possible that you would grant a one-party consent for us to uh, monitor your reporter's cell phone and office phones? Absolutely not. I'm sorry, Detective, but our ability to report is dependent upon our maintaining the confidentiality of our conversations. Now, we're perfectly willing to share with you the information that this individual has, as he's definitely not a confidential source. But we're not going to consent to the Baltimore Police Department monitoring our phones. You'll, uh, you'll tap the payphone, I guess. Don't print that either. Don't print anything about where the killer calls from. He'll change up. Well, I'll type up my notes quick. Big story for you guys, huh? Yeah, well, ten minutes ago, I'd have said this whole thing was complete bullshit. Shows what I know, I guess.